In this video, I'm going to show how to copy a data table from a difficult web page that is unusually hard to copy the data table into a spreadsheet, into, in this case, LibreOffice Calc, which is very similar to Microsoft Excel. It's sort of a free open source Excel clone. And I'll show you what the uh, result will look like. So here we have the data. And I also produced a plot of the data here. But how did I do this and why was it difficult to do? So first, let me show the problem with this web page. Uh, so we're going to try to copy the data on this web page into the cells in this spreadsheet here. We'll produce what I showed earlier. All right, so there's a number of ways to do this in uh, uh, Firefox. My web browser is Firefox. 98.0.2, I'm on a Windows computer, Windows 10, 64-bit uh, computer, and um, you can select tables in a couple of different ways, which sometimes work and sometimes don't. Uh, you could do the simple hold down the shift and select, and as we'll see, this doesn't work right. Uh, so let's copy it. I'll use the menu to be clear what I'm doing. I'm copying the table, a section of the table, just to show the problem. I go over to the empty spreadsheet, <coughs> And I click paste. As you can see, it comes out horrible. So let's do undo the insert. Let's try again. You can also use alt drag. And in many programs, not necessarily clear what it does in Firefox, but in many programs like the Windows console and a number of others, alt drag will often select a table as a block of text, a rectangular block of text or table, instead of the normal selection that you might be familiar with. So again, let's try copying that, and again, uh, we will paste it, try to paste it into our uh, spreadsheet. Again, it comes out as unreadable. Undo it again. So we back up to a blank spreadsheet, and there's another way. In Firefox, you can do Control key, the Windows Control key on your keyboard, and as you can, let me do this a little bit differently, and you can see it seems to be selecting blocks, and so this often is the way to select specifically a table, like you could grab this part here, see? All right, um, okay, so let's copy just that block. In, this will often work, but in, the, in this particular web, uh, particular web page, um, we'll hit paste. Again, it comes out all goofed up. So how do you get the data out without having to very tediously manually edit this sort of thing, okay? So I'm going to show how to do this using a add-on free open source tool called Camelot. It's a package for Python. The programming language can be installed on any computer, commonly used computer system like Windows. So what, it, what Camelot actually does is extracts tables from PDF, Adobe Acrobat PDF files. And it works reasonably well. It's not perfect, but it can often get the data out of a table in an Acrobat PDF file. These are text PDF files. It doesn't work uh, for uh, scanned images. So some PDF files actually just have basically like a JPEG image or something like that in here. So this is uh, the website or one of the websites for Camelot. And I'm not going to go through it all. I have it installed on my system. Um, so, so what do we do here? We click here. This is Firefox again, and this is the hamburger icon, and we want to print. But we're not going to print to our printer. And actually, I have it pre-configured, but normally I would be set to my printer here. But instead, you select the Microsoft Print to PDF. Okay, so it's going to print this page. Actually, it's going to print it as a PDF document. So here we go. And here's my um, folder where I'm doing the work. I'm going to extract the data. So I'm going to do it again, and I'm going to say um, demo. I'm just going to give it a very simple name. Okay, so demo. Okay. All right, so it returned. And so now let's go here, and this is my sandbox. Okay. And there's demo.pdf right here. So this is a, an example place, and, and this uh, particular console and so on, I have Camelot in, uh, installed. So let's just kind of verify that Camelot is there. I just want to. So Camelot is both a Python package you can use as a programmer, and it comes with a command line a DOS utility shown here called Camelot.exe. So let's do help. Now it doesn't support dash H, but dash dash help will show the help. 
there we go. So we just this is your command line instructions. You have some options. You have two commands. And this is one of some examples of things that make it kind of hard to use. Instead of saying the name of the file here, it says args. But this is actually where the name of the PDF file goes, the PDF file you're going to extract the table from. And it has version, and it has a whole bunch of different options, and I'll show some key ones. There are two commands for two different ways that it extracts and parses the table. Lattice uses lines between text to parse the table, and stream uses spaces between text to parse the table. Uh, when we look over here, there are no lines, or very few anyway. It's mostly spaces, so we're going to try, and I know the answer, the stream option. <clears throat> so what we do is we say Camelot and um, the format of the data that comes out of it is going to be a comma separated values file uh, actually data okay now that's something that the spreadsheet understands and that's why I'm choosing CSV although some of the others may work as well CSV is a very simple format almost all spreadsheets databases programming languages today will support it and can read and write it particularly spreadsheets databases and a number of other tools like this one uh, we want to call the output file demo, I'm, I'm going to call it demo under CSV. So we need to give the name of the output files it's going to generate. It's actually going to generate three, one for each page. And dash P is for the pages. So you can list the pages here, or you can just say all for all of them. And in this case, all the data that we want is in the P one PDF document, and one table that's spread out over three pages of the PDF. Okay, so far so good. And we then, so we've done the options. As I said, it appears to be all spaces, so we're going to use the stream command. And then we're going to do demo.pdf, and there we go. So it processes the pages, and it interprets what it sees in the pages as three tables. They're actually all the same data. So let's see what we got now, because... Um, Okay, and here are the page, the three tables. So the next thing that we're going to do is um, let me uh, show this command. This is a built-in command in Windows. Every all Windows DOS things have it. And it redirects output of the command line tools to the Windows clipboard. This text output can then be pasted in other programs. So the way we do this is clip, and then we're going to redirect these files into the into the clipboard. Okay, so again. We are using the clip command from Microsoft Windows, their DOS environment, and we're redirecting the CSV file into it. Okay, let's do that. Now, let's go over to our blank uh, spreadsheet here. We're going to paste that clipboard data in. Now, the, the spreadsheet, LibreOffice Calc, which is very similar to Excel, understands the CSV format and it kind of recognizes what it's looking at and it shows you what it's going to do with the data in the clipboard so you could cancel at this point if this didn't look right but it actually looks pretty much like what I want so there we go aha so we've got part of the data now this is only one third it spread the page over three pages in the PDF file all right so let's get the next set of data there we go and I'm just going to, so I want to select the next blank cell in the next row. And again, it does the same thing. So it's looking at what's in the uh, clipboard. And there's actually all kinds of uh, options here. So if it doesn't look right, you can fiddle with these sometimes to get the pasted uh, data to look right. Okay, so it looks pretty good. Here we go again. Okay, we've got two of the three blocks pasted. Much, much easier than doing it by hand, obviously. And let's get the third one. All right, we're going to go there. We're going to go here. And then we are going to uh, paste here again. So paste from the clipboard. And again, we see this stuff here. And so what this is, is these are approval and disapproval ratings from many different polling agencies, services, companies uh, for President Biden. So it lists here which poll agency approval disapproval the chain or difference between the two and the date range involved all right so now i'm going to show what you can do with this data just to produce the plot that was shown so the first thing that i'm going to do is get rid of some of the rows which we don't really need and don't help um, so 
this one. This one we don't need, so we go delete rows. And um, we're actually not going to really use this data. So I'm just going to um, delete it as well, just to make life simpler. Uh, let's see, we can do that. Okay. And this will cause problems in the plot. It's not going to look too well. We don't really need it. We just want to see that. Okay, that's great. Now, um, all right, so I'm going to do it a little bit crude way. It may not be the fastest way, but so I'm going to copy those guys and put them here. Edit, paste. There we go. All right. And then I'm actually going to get rid of these two. It's probably a faster way to do it, but for now I'll show doing it this way. And again, we're going to delete the columns. Uh, assuming we have them. Let's see, we can delete the columns. Okay, so now we have the date in the first column. And for each date, we show the percent approval and percent disapproval. And we want to get rid of these. These are at each new page in the PDF document. We get like a header or something. We want to delete that so we just have the data. So it's important if it writes it out like this to multiple PDF pages, that if there's any header or footer information like that, you probably want to get rid of it, as I'm doing. Okay, so now we have all the data is the data we really care about all the way from January of 2021 to the present, you know, the end of, um, <clears throat> excuse me. So this is March 18th to 21st of 2022. Now, to produce a, uh, we'll just save it at this point, and we'll just say demo, demo, okay, so we'll save a demo spreadsheet. Now, what we want to do is select all the data that we want to chart so we can see it more easily. So that's all selected. In LibreOffice Calc, there's a chart uh, wizard, which you go to the insert menu and you select chart. And in this case, I'd like to see a line chart where I have uh, the uh, date time on the horizontal axis and the two percentages shown in a uh, time series or a date series along here. So that's the idea. We do that. And this is significant. It's going to treat the first row as a, la a, row as a label. So that has the column titles, and that's going to show up in the legend of the chart. The first column is a label for the data points, which is going to be the time, in this case, along the horizontal axis. That's what we want. It doesn't always select these correctly, depending on what you selected over here, in which case you may either need to manually add a title row, for example, and then select that, or you may have to manually check these. But in this case, it did it correctly. Again, this shows the series. I want to display both of these together. I could delete them. You could add and remove them. And let's go to the next, which is the chart element. So this is um, President Biden approval ratings from many polls. So the polling report has many, many different polls, Gallup poll, Quinnipiac, uh, many different ones. All right, so that should go there. And here we go. And you can see here the legend. So the approve and disapprove came from the titles in the first row. And these labels here, which are actually the times. Now, if you pay close attention, you'll see that they're in a kind of confusing order because we over here on the left, we have the current time, uh, flat dates a few days ago. And on the right, we have January of 2021. That's obviously confusing to English speakers. Anybody whose language uh, represents time generally from left to right. So we can fix that. Okay, so we select, now this chart has a lot of components to it. It's complicated. If I click over here, I deselect the chart. I can select it by clicking here, but now I have the whole chart, and what happens depends on what exactly is selected. Um, try double-clicking, okay. Um, there we are, okay. Now, what I've done here is I've selected the X or horizontal axis. I could have selected other parts of it, like the legend, in which case it would do different things. And when I do the left click on the mouse or trackball, I'm going to get different you know, pop-up menus depending on which items are selected. So here, let's see if we can, there we go. Okay, so that was left clicking on the mouse. And this is the scale. You can select all kinds of things. This is what comes up. In this case, however, we want to reverse the direction along that horizontal axis. We check that checkbox, click OK, and now the data, the approval ratings, 
are ordered correctly from a long time ago, January of 2021, to the present day. And we can see, again, both approval and disapproval according to the plot. You can see there's a lot of scatter. These plots have a lot of variability to them. I mean, what I'm saying is polling data is typically not accurate to more than a few percentage points. And that's it. That's how to use Camelot uh, to do this. You do have to install Camelot. That's a little bit involved, but I'm not going to discuss how to um, install Camelot here. One other thing I should mention is I'm using the 0.9 version of Camelot. The most recent is slightly different and may affect some of the usability and other issues that Camelot version I'm using has. Uh, okay, so let me just show the version. Takes a few seconds to respond. I did want to show I'm using 0.9.0. .0. According to the website, this is the most recent version. It may be a little easier to use, hopefully, than Camelot. As you can tell from the help message and the things I was doing, it's a little involved to operate. You can perhaps write your own script or DOS command or something to exercise it so it's a little easier to use. That's an option. I may put something like that out on my website at some point, but right now this is all I'm all I'm doing. So again, Camelot is not perfect, but it can often extract data tables in an easily processable, cut and pasteable, usable way from PDF files. So not just what I did, but any kind of PDF file that's a text PDF file. And again, just to remind how we got that PDF file, you go up here in Firefox and to the hamburger icon and you hit print and you can select this Microsoft print to PDF to get a PDF, which you can then use Camelot on. It's a little involved, but it's much, much easier than doing it by hand. And as you, as I showed, getting otherwise selecting the data seemed to be impossible uh, using Firefox directly to get it into the clipboard. That concludes this video, which was produced on March 27th, 2022. This concludes this video presentation. If you like this video, please click like. Please click subscribe and the notification bell if you would like to receive more content from us. You can avoid internet censorship by subscribing directly to our RSS news feed. Please consider sharing the link by email and on your website or blog, in addition to liking, upvoting, or sharing on increasingly censored, advertising beholden, big company social media. We have encountered such censorship. Mathematical software is developing algorithms and software to automate data analysis, reducing the risks of costly errors, and increasing the predictive power of the results. You can support our work financially by subscribing on our Patreon page, https colon slash slash www.patreon.com slash mathsoft, or scanning the QR code in the lower right corner.